celebration, don't you think? And uh, we want to thank uh, Eugene Gowalt for, for being such a good friend to, to produce, produce these with us uh, each week so that we have a chance to communicate with, with, the, with our friends in the outside world, so to speak. And uh, we still would like your suggestions. I mean, I have a list of suggestions here that came a long time ago, and we would like more, more of your suggestions uh, to help us form what you'd like to hear from us. Now, Lynn? Yes. You want to begin? Well, shall we begin with uh, C.S. Lewis? See as full as it is. Okay, we'll talk about a little bit about Clive Staple, Clive Staples Lewis, better known as C.S. Lewis. Um, the famous Oxford Don and Cambridge professor who is said who is very much influenced by the Orthodox Church and who is said to have had sanctified imagination. And any of you who have read his works will know why he is said to have had sanctified imagination. For the rest of you, I'll try and explain. Um, but I'm trying to remember whether Screwtape Letters or the Chronicles of Narnia were his, were his most, which one of those was his most famous. Screwtape Letters was his most famous, um, uh, was the one he, did the most answering for and answering to and speaking on. And that was a series of conversations with, um, with an uncle and a nephew, deaf, both of whom were devils. And how they said about, uh, how they said about deceiving a human and tempting him away from, him, away from the course of true love. True love for God, that is, and true and and a sense of, of true dedication. Uh, it's written with a lot of it's written with a lot of sarcasm, with a lot, and it's it's fun. It's absolutely fun reading to know that someone has tapped into the mind, and he really felt. Excuse me. He really felt, by the way, that he did tap into the mind of the devil. He said all the time that he was writing it. Um, it, it, it was all itch and discomfort. Um, he said he got no real joy in writing it because he felt that he had sort of tapped into that evil world. Uh, but those of us who have read it have derived much joy and much pleasure from reading it. Uh, and I would highly recommend it. It reads very, it reads very fast. Um, you can read it in a night, two nights maybe, but uh, you won't want to stop reading it. Um, he's also famous for having written the Chronicles of Narnia, which I gave to my children somewhere between eight and nine years old. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe has already been made into a movie, and I think they did Prince Caspian too. I thought they were going to make all of them into movies, but... 
And I don't know why they stopped. I guess, I guess they don't translate to the screen as well. I, it's very hard when you're dealing with something mystical, and, and in all of his books he deals with something mystical. It's very hard to translate that to the screen. They're trying it now with American Gods, the, the book uh, by Neil Gaiman, with American Gods, and, and I see that it's gotten, it's gotten away from, from the book entirely, to, and it's become something of, uh, about optics. Then he also wrote a science fiction trilogy. Uh, the first one, Out of a Silent Planet, is about a, a man who is kidnapped by evil forces and, and taken to uh, another planet on which there is intelligent life. Not humanoid life, but intelligent animal life. the ability to speak and compose and, and build and construct and several forms of animal life that, inter, that, that interact with one another. The second one is called The Voyage to Pearl Andra or The Voyage to Venus. Now that particular book That particular tome is really, I guess, my favorite um, because it gives, it, it presents what could have been in a, in a new world of Adam and Eve. He, this, the same fellow goes, the same fellow goes to the planet of Venus. The first one is uh, out of the side of the planet, go, it goes to Mars, Malacandra they call it, in the old, in the old solar language. And the, the second one, he goes to Venus and there confronts. All of his books are, are about good and evil. There, there's always a fight between good and evil. Um, and there confronts the same evil that took him to the first planet. And that evil is trying to just seduce the new Eve, who would be the new Eve of that planet. There's a war for her spirit. And he seems to think, he seems to have conveyed that we all will be called upon at some point to fight for good and evil for, the, for, for our own spirits or for the spirit of someone else. He, his contention there is that we are all, we, are all, we all have to be vigilant and take care of one another spiritually, as well as ourselves. The third one is the scariest book I've ever written. I mean, wrote, I've ever read. I, and I read The Exorcist. <laughs> um, it's called That Hideous Strength. And it's, it keeps the same characters and adds two new ones. Uh, the same characters are trying to influence the planet Earth so that there's no more biological life. They, 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 want to take, they want to scale down the biological life and, and decide let, let who becomes rulers and who becomes, who becomes the elite be decided by a few. And the rest are, the rest are to serve humanity. The rest, are, the rest of humanity is to serve those few. Um, it's interesting how he brings in all of the all of the planets and all of the old gods into that, but always with the one the one true god at the head. Um, the old gods are not called gods; They're, he he labels them eldils, e l d i l, eldils, and they are angels. They are more or less angels. And each is given, each is given uh, direction over one planet. All of those books, uh, as I mentioned, are a continual battle between good and evil. And you've read all three of them. Do you have a favorite? No. 
A little more. I, as I said, that hideous strength really scares me because you meet people. He seemed to he seemed to delve very well into the mind of of, of ongoing evil because you meet people. One meets people who are very much like the characters in his books. And even in the, in the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, the Silver Chair, even in his children's books, which, by the way, are not necessarily only for children there. I mean, from, I reread them from time to time. Um, even in those books, you see the, you, you see the evil in, in, in the temptations of little, little children to do what what parents enjoy, uh, uh, tell them not to do. I think probably those books should be part of, even part of a, a, a Sunday school outside reading, you know how in, in school they assign you outside reading. In Sunday school they should assign outside reading of the Chronicles of Narnia. Do you have a favorite among those? No, I love them all. We used to te uh, teach uh, C.S. Lewis in my course at McGill called Eastern Orthodox Mysticism and Contemporary Literature. And I demonstrate how he was very much influenced by, by, by orthodoxy. But one of the most, several, several images that come out of his books that stick in my mind is when the lion ple peels off the skin and how we have to peel off the skin of our egos. And the other is uh, the woman whispering in the ear. Is it Jack? The woman whispers in his ear. It makes you think right away of, of the temptation uh, in, in, in the Garden of Eden. The whisper, the temptation in the fall but he 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 captures the imagination of of uh, of little children and of and of adults and how we are affected really by by good and evil in this world and Lynn and I would highly recommend uh, that his books be read as she said, be a part of a, a reading club or... Great for a book club. Also great for a book club is his book called The Great Divorce, um, which is, which is, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm just going to tell you it's a good book. And it's great for a book club because there's lots of angles and lots of, but there's, there's lots to be gotten into. But screw tape letters, the genius of screw tape letters is how slow the seduction of the, of the, of the spirit can be by the devil and how, how we can sink into the mire of, of sin by the smallest things. How slow and methodical. Methodical and it just plan. Somehow captures and captivates the heart and the spirit, and then you're gone. So I would suggest Screw Tape Letters as a number one book to read. Because we seem to think that uh, everything is A okay. And it, actually, not everything is A-OK. -okay. And it can look A-OK -okay on the surface. It can look like you're, it, the, the thing that, that, that stands out for me in the screw tape letters is, is that it can look like, and you can actually feel like you're doing the right thing while you're doing the devil's work. So you have to be aware all the time. You have to be prayerful all the time to be led away from that temptation because it, he can make you feel like you're doing the right thing. I just put a couple books out here uh, that you could just see from C.S. Lewis. We have maybe 
half a library of his books and of severe mercy when he took care of this uh, of this woman that somehow became his wife and how he took care of her until she died of cancer and it's just so touching surprised uh, by joy yeah surprised by joy uh, so we hope that we uh, touched a small spot today in your in your reading heart uh, to take a look at uh, C.S. Lewis and your children. We gave all of our children uh, his books as gifts because we felt that uh, the tales of Narnia would would capture the imagination of our of our young people. And um, it's great reading and great inspiration during Great Lent. Take a look. I think you'll enjoy the works of C.S. Lewis. I know you will. Thank you. Yeah.